703. And far when she works. And I will call to order this special meeting of the Waterbury Select Board. Quiet, please. Thank you. Uh, this will be a special meeting. Uh, normally we meet on the first and third uh, Mondays of the month. Uh, we decided to have this special meeting to talk uh, almost exclusively about flood mitigation. And I'd like to thank everyone, uh, both here and online, for taking the time to show up uh, to help us discuss this. Uh, I will be turning the meeting over to Alyssa Johnson, our vice chair, uh, whose uh, professional capacity is to organize this type of facilitated meetings and allow me to participate as a uh, flood survivor myself. Um, we do have uh, one item on the consent agenda, which is uh, a request for a, uh, for a special uh, block party on the 10th of August. Uh, Nate uh, Dunbar has applied. He's the owner of uh, the Beer Collective on Elm Street. Uh, so I'd like to encourage everyone to participate, uh, assuming that the board decides to approve the uh, permit. So the first item on the agenda is to approve the agenda. Do I have a motion? So moved. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The agenda is approved as written. Next is the consent agenda item. Do I have a motion? I move to approve the consent agenda as written. Second. Moved and seconded. Any further discussion? <coughs> Hearing none, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? All right. The consent agenda is approved as written. Next is the public session. Anyone wishing to address anything not on the warned agenda, uh, I ask to please come forward. And please keep your uh, comments to three minutes. Anything requiring more than that, we'll be glad to put it on the agenda for an ensuing meeting. Yes, Kevin. Yes, no, not really to the agenda. I just want to point out that um, I haven't seen you since we talked about the new zoning regs, but in the new zoning regs, I brought up the question about why was density going to be higher and setbacks lower on Main Street? North and South and Middle Main Street when they are in the floodplain. And I think the last flood again shows that you're increasing density, uh, lessening density requirements in the floodplains versus higher levels like High Street, Union Street, all the other places. And I don't know what can be done about this at this point, but it just really grates me that we're going to be putting more development in tighter spaces in a floodplain in the village. Okay, thank you. Anyone else? No? Okay. Um, next is a brief overview of the potential flood mitigation uh, projects and other updates. Tom? Sure. I'll do my best to stick to the 15 minutes. Um, I'm Tom Lights, the town manager here. Um, to the extent I can be brief, I'm going to just talk about the concepts that we're exploring now. There's a grant Speak opportunity. Up. Speak up if you Speak can. Up. There's a grant opportunity due August 16th. It's called a pre-application. So in essence, we have to submit concepts to the state. Um, and from there, the state will help us whittle down the list to something that um, hopefully would be approved for some long-term funding, um, generally in the form of study, funding to study and to engineer future projects. Um, Pretty long list, let me go through it as best I can. Um, the first is the uh, pretty obvious one, the cornfield behind Randall Street. Um, we have hired a hydrologist uh, who did a study of the Winooski um, after Hurricane Irene. Um, that's been done already, he's engaged with us. He's redoing that study, he has much better data available and much better mapping tools. The study after Irene began at the ice center and ended um, at the wastewater plant, we're going to go further and end um, down on Route 2. 
Um, part of that study, he's going to look at the cornfield. Um, a lot of people have asked me about what's possible there, and is it possible to do something like create a berm um, at the extreme? And the answer is nothing is off the table, but a lot of the more extreme concepts are really hard to do and really, um, really not necessarily in compliant with floodplain regulations. Um, but he's going to study the cornfield. What certainly is likely possible is to lower it a little bit um, to um, create some positive drainage um, in the cornfield. And the other piece is I've engaged with the state uh, that owns the cornfield, and I've suggested that the cornfield has obviously become silted in in the past year alone. And if nothing else, we need to have some long-term agreement where <laughs> once a project is done, we have the automatic authority to go in and remove silt as it fills in. Um, and right now, um, the Waterbury Roundabout, I think, had a great picture. Gordon Miller sent his drone up and took a picture during the flood. And you can see the center is the high point. Um, so we're essentially directing water towards Randall Street. So it seems to me at a minimum we can address that, whether or not we can do something more expansive to give flood relief to that immediate area is a different question, but that's why we've engaged the hydrologist. Um, going a little further, the bottom of Winooski Street, which we've now lost a couple times um, in recent years, um, what the hydrologist has said is once he completes, uh, if you will, the base model of the river, um, he can plug and play different scenarios. And so one scenario we want to entertain is do we do something at the bottom of Winooski to um, create some sort of large culvert system one, to not necessarily lose the road, but two, if we can relieve pressure upstream, does that, does that benefit the residents immediately upstream? So another one of our concepts that we're, we're working with. Um, the other one that has always struck me as, as easy to fix, but, but I assure you after talking to the engineers, it is not, um, is the storm source. Um, people that were, were out in the middle of the night last summer um, saw this. People saw this most recently. Um, the lowest storm sores in our system are right in front of the fire station here, the bottom of Randall and Elm, and at the Wesleyan Church. Um, to some extent, when the flood gets high enough, 426, 427 feet on the river, the river connects. But below that, those storm sores are the first place to flood. I've naturally asked the engineers, I've suggested there's got to be some way to, to fix this. There's got to be backflow valves or some sort of a baffle system. And the answer they give me is, there is. There's likely a way to fix this. But as it turns out, it's hugely complex. Um, so that's something we're trying to study. Um, again, I don't think that's a solution when the river hits 427 feet. But perhaps at 423 or 424, certain areas can be spared. Um, again, I, I've had this conversation with the engineers five times over. And I don't, as a layperson, understand why there's not an easy solution to this. Um, but unfortunately, there's just not. Um, next um, is Route 2. Um, something I observed, something a lot of people have told me, is if you drive down Route 2 um, between Jenny Davis, Jenny Davis and Little River Road, the water comes off the mountainside um, and comes off the highway and runs south. And there's one culvert uh, where all the water goes under. And so the homes on Route 2 that are closer to I-89 have backyard flooding before the homes on the other side of the river. Um, so if there's some way to create some form of better drainage in that area, that may just mean enlarging the culvert. Um, we'd like to research that. Putting in more culverts is difficult because you're dealing with multiple property owners and a state highway. Um, but again, that's an area pretty prominently on our list where I think we can do some good. Um, and we'll leave that to the engineers to give us some, some official uh, and formal estimates of what can be done. Um, we're also looking at the ice center land. Um, that was a part of the study a decade ago, but it was really focused on giving flood relief only to the neighborhoods. So we have a FEMA grant um, to repair the soccer field at the ice center, and that's in the pipeline now for the damage done last summer. But one question we're asking is, what's a better community asset, the ice center or a soccer field? And if, in fact, that field can be lowered, it may make it unusable as a soccer field, but it may protect the ice center. And so that's something that we'd like to evaluate. I'm not quite sure the answer to that question. If there is a meaningful project there, what is a better community asset to protect? Um, that's a bigger question than I think this meeting is intended to answer. Um, but I think we should have some, uh, some data to at least have the conversation. Um, 
The next item, again being brief, are the sinkholes on Randall Street. I don't have an exact count, but I keep hearing from people and I've seen a bunch myself. Um, I'm not the engineer. I don't know if the sinkholes are appearing just because there's, there's water and there's drainage and there's compaction of soils, or is in fact there a larger issue that's more neighborhood wide, something to do with the, you know, the geology of the, of the area. Um, but again, the engineers can, can work on that and figure that out with some, with some money to study, study it. Um, going further, the, um, the hydrology study done after Hurricane Irene uh, did, include, did include Thatcher Brook, but it stopped at I-89. And we want to go further, um, all the way to Newland Flats, we think, and to include portions of Grays Brook. Uh, where Grays Brook meets Thatcher Brook at the Lincoln Street Park and Ride, there was a pretty serious washout and challenge there. And so there could be some infrastructure upgrades that should happen in that area. But we also want to look at um, some of the land. And is there some possibility of creating additional floodplain? Again, not easy. That's all private property. Mm -hmm. But something that struck me and a number of others that the July flood was substantially a Winooski River event, but the December flood, and particularly the July 2024 flood, was very much a Thatcher Brook and Grays Brook event. And to my eye, at least, the flooding along Guptill Road was a lot worse this summer than last summer. So that's an area we have um, something we want to concentrate on a little bit and think about uh, pretty hard. Um, there's also an array of infrastructure damage that happened to town infrastructure um, in that area of Waterbury Center. Uh, several places water lines were exposed. We've got to fix that, hopefully for the long term. Um, we've got the dip in Shaw Mansion Road that washed out, and there will be a conversation about that and whether or not we fix it. Um, not well known to the public yet, but we had a number of, of slides where essentially the, the, the edge of the road sloughed off, and we had to spend some money stabilizing the road. And so there's a number of concerns there about our infrastructure we want to look into. Um, I also think there's a role here for the Town Planning Commission to consider, um, and that would be directed by the Select Board, but that's an area of town that has some development pressure. Every new home, every new driveway, every new road, um, everything is hydrologically connected, so that water has to go somewhere. And so I think perhaps it's in the town's interest to take a hard look at our stormwater regulations for new development. Um, stormwater regulations for driveways and roads. Something that I noticed driving the roads after the most recent flood was we had a number of our own road washouts. That was obvious to anyone. Try to drive Greg Hill and you'll see one. Um, we had a number of places where private roads and driveways were deposited into our roads. And maybe that can be addressed. Um, not an easy thing, something that had to be changed over time. But I think that's an area that we should focus some energy on. Um, Going further, less about this meeting, I hear it, I get it, <laughs> um, is the SOAR plant. There's an array of engineering improvements we want to look at the SOAR plant. Um, the SOAR plant sits on 39 acres, every inch of which is in the floodplain. Uh, Johnson lost their SOAR plant effectively in full for some time. Uh, we, want to look at the SOAR, we want to look at the land around the SOAR plant to see if there's some gain in lowering that land. Um, and perhaps creating a little, a little benefit to, the, to protecting the plant itself. The challenge there that the engineers tell me is if you lower land, in theory, you, you can create some, some localized floodplain benefit. You also invite the river there more often, which could pose its own issues. So it's something that needs some pretty careful analysis. Um, we also are concerned about the lagoon walls. So the last couple of floods, and I see Harry Shepard is here. Harry is the Public Works Director of Stowe. He was kind enough to give us a the monster of all pumps. So we were essentially directly pumping from the lagoons, um, not the lagoons, sorry, the, yep, the lagoons, um, into the river, because we were worried about the lagoon walls. Um, obviously, we're not discharging fully treated water at that point, but you do the best you can in an emergency. Um, we'd like to look at some long-term solutions so that we make sure the lagoon walls are protected during a flood, and also that we have some ability to um, to make sure we can discharge that water um, without having to call a neighboring town each time and begging for their pump, uh, which they might need on their own someday. Um, going a little further, 
just want to give a quick update on buyouts since I know that'll be a part topic of conversation tonight. Um, we've had uh, three homes on Union Street that were approved by the select board for a buyout, uh, one on Main Street and one on Route 2. Uh, so five homes in total. One has been approved for a relocation. It is possible to do a FEMA relocation. It's tough. You've got to have a, a house that can be moved and, and find a new lot. I was told when the buyouts were submitted that once it's submitted and all the information is in, it's about a year to get from FEMA a number. And at that point, the homeowner can say yes or no. There's no obligation. In fact, there's no obligation until the closing documents are signed. Um, I haven't heard a number from anyone yet. The number is supposed to be based on the, on the pre-flood 2023 value. Um, so we're still waiting. Once the number is given to us, I am told it is a pretty standard real estate closing process from the homeowner's perspective. It just takes more time than normal. So something like 18 months in total to complete a buyout and what I tell everyone I talk to is if you are interested in a buyout that needs select board approval come before the select board and make the request because the worst that can happen is the select board says no and if you actually if they say yes and the buyout is approved and you go through the process it is the cheapest real estate closing you ever have because there's no commission to pay a realtor and the select board and the federal government are involved in the real estate closing so do you need your own attorney to review the closing documents? I'd probably get my own attorney. Um, but again, it's, it's about the cheapest closing you'll ever have. So I encourage everyone, if you're interested, just get on the agenda, call me, and let's go from there. And the worst, the worst case scenario is the select board says no. Um, and there's no obligation until you sign the closing documents, no different than any other real estate sale. Um, elevations are, are a bit more difficult. We do have a couple of elevation projects um, that have formally begun, and a number of others have spoken with me about it. Um, the challenge is FEMA has a magic number of $228,000. If, if the cost to elevate your property is below that, um, it's sort of an immediate go on their end, and, it, and it, it meets their financial feasibility test. If it's not more, If it's more than that, it's more of a challenge doesn't mean it's impossible, but it's a challenge. Um, the real issue with elevations, and by elevation I mean the FEMA rule is your utilities and living space is two feet above the floodplain. In many cases that effectively means your entire first floor. The challenge is it is a very laborious process. It takes a lot of years, a lot of emotional investment, um, potentially some financial investment on the homeowner's part. After I read, nine elevation projects were approved, um, and one occurred, which gives you some concept of how difficult it is. Um, the other piece I just want to note is a number of people have had conversations about elevating without FEMA, and that is entirely on you as a homeowner. Um, people have expressed concerns about the historic district, which encompasses Randall and Elm. That is a concern, however, if you are not taking state or federal money, there is no required historic district review. So if you simply want to add a bump out to the back of your house and move your utilities upstairs, talk to Mike Bishop in the zoning office. But beyond that, there's no regulatory hurdle at the state or federal level to do that. So I just want to note that. Um, finally, just a couple other small things I want to talk about that's on our agenda. Um, town Hall. Town Hall, not surprisingly, was built generally to be two feet above the floodplain. So our utilities are, in fact, exactly two feet above the floodplain. The floodplain maps are in the process of being redrawn. Um, I'm told that we will have the new maps in about a year. They won't be legal yet, but they'll be draft. And I suspect our utilities at Town Hall won't be two feet above the floodplain, so I'd like to look into elevating those utilities, which may not be that difficult. They're on pillars already. But if Town Hall floods, or simply, if, if this past week, if the volunteers were at Town Hall and there was no air conditioning, it would have been a little more unpleasant for the volunteers and for staff, um, similar if the heating system was out. So I think elevating those utilities is something on the list. Um, and the other simple thing that um, I want to look into are electronic water shutoff valves. Our water plant, typical day, produces about, treats about 150,000 gallons of water. During the last few floods, we've done two to three times that, and that's generally because um, 
people have damage in their basements and pipes break. Um, they sell electronic valves where we can uh, shut them off uh, via a cell phone if we want to. Typically, they sell those and they market those for problem customers. So I can shut your water off if you don't pay your bill and we don't have to send a guy out with a wrench. Um, this is a little different. In the same way, there are smart meters where your power can be shut off remotely. We can shut your water off remotely. Um, one, so we're not treating water and spending money on that. And two, so we're not trying to pump you out as you refill with our own treated water. Um, sounds easy enough. But these valves are three, four hundred bucks a pop to buy. If we're buying a few hundred, that adds up. Never mind the installation. So that's something I'd like to seek some funding to do. But I think it makes logical sense for the folks in the floodplain that are on our on our water system. Um, so that's the hopefully the fifteen minute laundry list. Did I did I keep with the schedule there? I tried. Can I ask a question? Uh, sure. I'm surprised that the ditch. Is located where the new ambulance is going to be is not on that list since that sheds 175 acres of water off the interstate and effectively makes part of South Main Street, which is up there, a moat. And that, in addition to, I, I'm surprised, didn't see anything about where Crossit Brook comes in um, near the Mooski Bridge down the south end of town. Because we got saved this time from getting much water, and I think it's for two reasons. One is the ditch backed up on the other side of the tracks mm -hmm. and the culvert, so the water went that way. And then the water across the brook, there were so many trees that fell down that it backed up, and that's why you see those houses off their foundation and everything off that. But those two things send a lot of water to the lower part of South Main Street that stretches from the old Abishan building up to past the historic deal house. And it's the same houses getting wrecked over and over and over again. And what I noticed is that the depot beverage um, and the houses on the Montpelier side of that bridge consistently, even during our meeting, got much less water than we did. So my question is, is it because of those barriers that they put up when they put the bridge in or they lowered it there? I, I know that over time that the process Brook has deposited a ton of gravel and sand. Every time there's a flood, people used to have to wear waders to fish down there, and now even when the water's high, they can stand on the sand. Yeah. So I would like to see, and if you notice from here to Richmond, there's more and more and more and more of those sand islands, and they're not natural to the Mississippi River. They're coming there because of all the gravel and sand that's washed off the roads. So on the ambulance site, um, well, Tom, can I just say, this is exactly what this yeah. meeting is for, and I want everyone to have a chance, so I, you can respond, but I, I just want to name thank you, Kathy, and this is the goal of tonight, and so I think if it's okay, I might pause and just say, I've written that down, the goal of tonight is to hear as many ideas, I don't think we're going to have all the answers tonight, so just being, yeah. oh, Tom did so good, I, I, told him 15, I told him 15 minutes and he stayed right on time, I so I want to I wanna keep the momentum if we can. Except I was told that this was on the list by the developers down there, so I just wanted to put that. So, I'll, I'll be brief. On the ambulance site, I'll be honest, I haven't thought about that site, in part because um, I know there's been so much time and effort and money spent on the engineering that I, I trusted the professionals to to handle that, but but perhaps that should be on our list. Um, the general comment about, about the brooks and being full and the river being full, I've had this conversation a lot with with a lot of folks around the state, and, and I used an analogy at a select board meeting a few weeks ago uh, when someone asked about, when someone asked this question, if you think about the floodplain, now the floodplain is really broad and really flat, and in the middle there's a little dip, which is the river or the creek. And so to condense that huge amount, and, and think of Dak Row, which is the simplest one, right next to the river, all of Dak Row was flooded. I don't know what the average depth was, but eight, 10 feet. Compressing all that water into the river doesn't mean dredging the river, it means making the Grand Canyon. It, it is simply not feasible with all the money in the world. Um, secondly, if you do that, rivers are great at, at filling in. That's what they do. Everything comes off the mountains and the roads and fills right in. So it would be constant maintenance. Um, 
we would have to dredge the Winooski to a depth that our bridges would fall in because the abutments would be undermined. It's just not possible. So it, it's a great thought. And I know a lot of people have said to me that um, a generation or two ago, people were allowed to go into the rivers and perhaps take some material out. But that was farmers taking yards at a time, not, not hundreds of thousands of yards. So it's just, it's a great thought. You're not the first person to, to have it. Um, it's just not financially feasible. It's just not practical. Um, you know, what I want to end by saying is that all these ideas, if every one of these ideas is grant funded 100% and everyone is implemented, we are not engineering our way out of this challenge. The river is going to be the river. The river is going to flood. We have to deal with this over time in a myriad of ways. But if we're wildly successful, will the, will the impact of a flood be lessened? Yes. But we are talking inches of height, and we are talking perhaps some improvement in the time that the water is up. But if the river is going to go to 427 feet, after all these improvements, it's still going to get pretty close to that. So we just have to acknowledge that, that there's no engineering a way out of this challenge. If, if there was, it would be fixed by now. All right, um, uh, excuse me, I'm, I'm not going to take any more questions because we are out of time for this portion of the meeting. Uh, at this point, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Alyssa. Well, Roger said I should do it like work, so I'm standing up. Um, and the first rule when you're facilitating is to start with expectation setting, so that's what I'm going to like take about a five minute Alyssa monologue and just talk about where we're at and in terms of like the time we all have here together tonight. Um, first, I want to say thank you. It's a lovely summer evening despite the thunder and I didn't know how many folks would show up. So thank you for being here. I know a lot of you are coming in the midst of dealing with this on your personal properties and just want to acknowledge that I know you're already going through so much. So to also take the time and be here um, is really important and really impactful. So thank you. Um, this is not the first or last conversation about flooding in Waterbury that's going to happen. Um, and there's so many different dimensions to that. So again, there's pieces of, of it that have to do with immediate response. Um, I thought last year when I took two weeks off from work and was helping with immediate response, that was going to be the one time. And it's happened twice since. And again, I don't need to tell this to this room. But there's pieces around response. There's pieces around individual homeowners and what's right for them. Um, Tom gave the buyout update, but I would say actually what we're here for tonight is thinking up that higher level around what are we as a town going to do? And the reason that I pointed out Kathy's exchange with Tom and why I thought that was so great is to acknowledge Tom gave some updates up front. So uh, we're the select board. We do have deadlines at certain points. There are deadlines for grants and funding. We're also seeking out additional funding beyond what's here tonight. We might need to come up with creative solution for grant programs that don't exist yet and propose why they should exist to help solve Waterbury's problems. But we're not able to do that without input. We know that we have blinders on in that uh, Tom is our municipal manager. We hire him to manage the municipality. What he knows the most about is municipal infrastructure. There's different ownership combinations. You heard about the sewer plant. Well, that's actually owned by the Everett for our utilities district. There's all different pieces. But I think our goal for tonight is to just make sure that we offer space to make sure we have all of the different proposals from all of you on the table so we know what is out there that we've missed that it's really important to include in our conversation. And also, if there's particular things that feel most pressing. We're not going to be able to do everything at once. There might be some quick fixes we can do right away. But also understanding what particular pieces are most impactful is really helpful for our work. So the structure for the rest of tonight is acknowledging we have an awesome turnout. So I'm seeing like 50 folks in the room. We have people on Zoom as well. We're not going to have time to have the level of conversation we all want to have in one group. So we're going to propose two breakouts in here to allow two smaller conversations and also a breakout for all the folks on Zoom. And that's not, so you don't hear, we're going to come back together and report back after, but we want to have time for everyone to introduce themselves, to share their particular ideas, proposals, Tom used the word concepts around things. We're going to have a note taker and a facilitator in each of the breakout, 
And again, have that time for everyone to share, to write down, these are the ideas, these are the things I think you're not considering. We're then gonna take a little time in those small groups to also come up with, is there a couple of three to five top ideas that the group thinks are really important? Nothing tonight is binding. We are not voting money, we are not taking official action. This is like a community forum and input but it's also really useful for us to move forward. Um, we have ways for folks online and folks in the room then also to just do like a quick gut check. This is a thing I think is really important. And again, that's all just part of our prioritization. So some time to share in small groups, some time to come up with what feels most important in your group. We're then gonna come all back together and hear what was the conversation on Zoom? Um, Nora's gonna help facilitate that. Um, we're gonna have Roger, Liz, that half, I'll take the other half here. We'll move some chairs, we'll do our best, um, and then come and share and report back. That was kind of what was workable within the amount of time we had. I have a general question actually, this is regarding the options which uh, the travel manager picks. Yes. There is any timeline or milestone dates. So, because the options then like takes two years, three years, six months, three months, or there is any milestone dates that you will get an update. Great question. So am I understanding correctly milestone dates of when you would have updates? So one that he just shared is there's a pre-application. That's a laundry list of concepts that goes to the state. That's August 16th, but it may have been extended. August 16th. Um, so there will be some information at that point. So when you, so like the options you would use are options which you accepted, when you look. End of the year. Okay. Can you just restate again what the end of the year is the deadline for? So between August 16th and, and I forget the exact date, but it's roughly the end of the year. Tom, mm -hmm. Tom, please come stand near this microphone. Folks at home probably cannot hear you. <laughs> so between August 16th, when the pre-application is due, and, and I forget the exact date, but it's roughly the end of the year. It's late December. Um, the pre-application is turned into a final application. So the pre-application is conceptual. The final application has actual budget estimates behind it. And so that's what we've hired the hydrologist to, to help us work out is to, for some of these concepts, simply how much will it cost you to simply study the engineering, but then also a, a general estimate of what would it cost to do the final project. And based on that, the state will do their own evaluation about what's feasible, what makes the most sense. Um, and then we'll know um, end of the year, early January, about what's funded and how we move forward. And we'll also know that are there certain concepts that the community supports that we want to pay for with town money. I guess one other caveat just to add is there's so multiple timelines, but the sooner we're aware of concepts or potential proposals before the 16th, if they're eligible, we would be able to include them. So sooner is better. It doesn't have to be final, but I think it's fair to say that hearing those ideas sooner are part of why we had this meeting tonight um, so that we can include as much as is potentially possible. And again, it might not all land in that grant. It will get tossed out as we go further. Um, we now have the piece where we break up the groups. And I will say I'm weighing two different considerations. So one is that acknowledging uh, there's some specific geography in the community that impacts some streets that are very prone to flooding and that there might be um, value in having folks from similar areas together, but also that we have community members from all over town who might also be here to weigh in. Um, do you want to try a show of hands quickly if you live on or are interested in talking about Randall, Un Union, Elm Street, maybe South Main Street? Maybe or for sure. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait for now only because does this feel like half, Roger? Um, maybe a little under half. All right, yeah. so can we add in South Main? OK, great. So do we want to take that group of folks who just raised their hand, have you go back to the Gordon corner, in that group, we're going to do introductions, share out ideas. Roger and Liz has agreed to note take for that group. We'll be in the back corner to write down everyone's ideas, go around everyone's share. The rest of the room that isn't is going to come forward with me, Kane, and Tom. We're going to do the same thing in this group. People online, we're going to put you in a breakout group. Karen will do that. You have to say accept. It will whisk you through cyberspace. 
into a group with Nora where she'll be doing the same activity and then you're gonna come back and report. All right, thank you everyone. I will just say the conversation I overheard between Mark Bard and Roger Clapp was that conversation went on too long and we didn't have nearly enough time. So just acknowledging we're splitting the middle and doing our best to make the use of our time together. Um, I wasn't in that group, so um, two things. So one, want to take this time to hear from Nora and the folks who were on Zoom about the conversation they had, to hear from this side of the room, to share from ours, then be able to do a quick voting exercise, and then uh, we'll be done with you all at 9. You're welcome to stay for the rest of our agenda or not. Um, Nora, do you mind starting with report outs from your group? We have 12 minutes till 9 o'clock, people. We totally got this. Uh, our online group slide presentation for you all. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> wow. and Look at them. I think we should give a round of applause to the folks who stayed on the phone this whole time. Woo! You guys are troopers. Um, so we have Nora Bard and Roger Clapp and 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 Nora Bard it was brought up again, the idea about the storm drains on South Main by the former Abishan. Talked about negotiating with private landowners to purchase or repurpose land. Um, addressing the gravel issue, I think this was discussed in plenary as well, reclaiming gravel that washes from the roads into rivers. And then there was an idea around highly local environmental assessment, so understanding how small things like a new culvert on a road or a new telephone line or anything like that has impacted the rivers over the last 10 to 20 years. And then lastly, uh, trying to understand what projects at the dam might be feasible. I knew nothing about it, and our group was just wondering what's there. We then took a vote in our group, since they won't be able to vote here in person, and the ideas that went to the top were, number one, removing silt from the cornfield, storm sewer improvements to prevent backflow, and then other flood mitigation at the cornfield with the berm, and then we voted for understanding what projects might be feasible at the dam as well. So the only new addition we added on a voting chart over there is the dam. We don't have any details about what we were thinking there. It's more understanding what's possible. Folks online, did I miss anything from our conversation? Scott, Laura, Stacy. No, that was great. Thank you. Great. Thank you, guys. OK. Thanks. <laughs> Roger, do you have a slide? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to Run share it? <laughs> yeah. uh, Liz uh, has lots of. Ah, there we go. Um, and and Nora, can you write them all separately? Just okay, great. I think uh, you know what I heard was that there's a lot of interest in doing something with the cornfield. <laughs> Uh, and uh, that that uh, should be a major focus. But uh, meanwhile, there's a, a lot of maybe perhaps smaller projects that can be undertaken in the shorter term, uh, including removing uh, accumulated silt and debris underneath uh, the bridge on Army Drive and perhaps underneath uh, the Route 2. Uh, underpass there, under the, we've got like three things stacked on top of the road, the, the trains, the road, and then the water underneath. Uh, and the water underneath isn't big enough to handle all the water that came down uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so what, what can be done there? Um, might, might be a longer term project, but in the short term, maybe there's some stuff in there that could be pushed out. Um, and uh, let's see, there are, um, uh, other floodplain properties and projects that we can uh, take a look at. Uh, people talked about uh, where can the state help out? Uh, they own the cornfield, uh, they own uh, all the waterfront there. Uh, there's things that aren't being taken care of right now, like the, uh, the swales that they put in are now blocked up with uh, silt and debris. Um, so what can, we, what can we do sort of proactively to get that done? Um, and then uh, I think people just generally looked at the fact that we're going to be having more floods. The long-term forecast is, is not positive. 
Uh, we're going to be dealing with this, as Tom said, uh, for a while. So we just need to uh, be thinking larger, like uh, a lot of people have been doing tonight, and, and looking at larger scale projects that we can uh, come up with and, and uh, figure out what's, what's most feasible. I'll take uh, any other comments that I may have missed. Covered it all. Okay. Um, and I'll go quick. Our group did not write them all out, so if someone's willing to. Um, our group was also very excited about the cornfield. Um, the one spin I will add is there was a proposal around um, some sort of wetland. We have the Cross Vermont Trail currently. Like, could that be a board rock? And there was wetland there was one particular iteration. Um, also just discussion around the particular plants, trees, deep grasses that are grown there. Um, another major theme in our group was around, the, again, not comprehensive. These were just the ones that the most folks said the most time, um, around debris removal, particularly, again, like Roger just said, around bridges and culverts. Um, our group made a lot of note around regional collaboration. We are Waterbury. Um, we're working on tackling the problem here. The things that impact Waterbury do not start and end at our town borders. And so being sure to involve our communities upstream and downstream neighbors um, in conversations and solutions moving forward. Um, there was interest raised in our group around regulations for stormwater management, particularly for new development for individual homes and private roads, again, especially think kind, kind of outside of our downtown core. Um, and then also support for homeowner education, just recognizing um, a piece of the resilience is making sure on an individual level um, folks do have the resources they need. Um, would welcome other additions from the group. I don't want to minimize there was other points raised that I wasn't able to share in this summary, but we have notes for those. All right. So now, with six minutes to the 9 o'clock p.m., why did I give you eight things? Um, this is a gut check vote. I hesitate to use the word vote because, as I said, we're not setting business. Some people may have left. Um, if you can see, our wonderful assistants in the back have been doing their best to capture the takeaways, we said, from each group, which, again, as we've acknowledged, is not everything that was said here tonight. There's also some pointing to some of the points Tom brought up earlier on municipal ideas. You have your eight votes just to like thumbs up. If there's something you're really excited about being pursued, I would encourage you to place one or more of your stickers on that particular sheet. Um, we'll count them up at the end and have it for reference. This is not the be all end all. I know not everyone is here in the room tonight. Not everyone was able to stay all night. Um, but it's just a piece of data for us around some of the things that were discussed here tonight. And again, if there's ones that feel like they're rising to the top. Um, contrary to what Nora said, we did also try and do it real time. So if you saw me rudely on my phone, um, if you go to the home page of the Waterbury VT website, um, I'm also putting this into an online platform called Poll Unit. So for folks who weren't able to be here tonight um, or who are online, they will also have a way to weigh in. Again, it's on. We they used it. Okay, so they already used it and brought the data back because Nora has a PhD and you know is really good at that. Um, so that's all set. But just to say that will remain open for others. So just recognizing it's unofficial if folks are willing. Um, and if you didn't get your eight stickers, come find us. Um, wanted to offer the last four minutes to weigh in. Um, we're going to think about our next meeting agenda. Um, but I think that wraps up the input session for tonight. And just thank you again, everyone, for being just here and sharing. On yeah. the order, if you, if you let everybody put all eight stickers, say, on the cornfield, you know, basically, Randall Street has a lot of people here. Yeah. It could end up being the number one thing and not really reflective of other choices because, do you see what I'm saying? Totally. I hear that. And when we, we do this at work, like I said, and there's a, like a, some people say you should only allow one per all the different things, so and you shouldn't allow any type of hierarchy. When we made the call tonight, we said it's set up to allow as many as you want on each item. So if folks want to wait something, we wanted that waiting ability to do there. I hear you. I also said this is not representative or binding for the reasons you just said. This is not a town-wide vote. This is not a referendum. This is just a gut check of the people who care to come to this meeting tonight and what they think. So I hear you. Any other questions? So we're supposed to go around and just put our Yeah, so we've those. got um, in the back, thank you yeah. to various helpers, um, on the sheets where it's kind of titled and there's space underneath, stick a sticker if you're interested. Um, again, we'll kind of recess, then come back together for our agenda. But thank you all for being here and for your input.
Ian! Did you want to vote? Oh, I've got. Oh, Tom? No, I should just... Karen! Yeah. Or somewhere in there. Yeah, that was great. I'm going to go stick my stick with this. Well, we'll put it in the stick with
This is prioritization. It's just stuff. So we just have agenda at the market. We, we were scared about saying voting. Yeah, no totally. Senators, they're in the house. But, but, <laughs> Which so, road is Let me just show you this. So this is Plainfield. So this, it's Plainfield. This is what you're seeing here. Yeah. Is the new gravel yeah. that was trucked in from a quarry. This is the gravel that used to be on the road. Yeah. That is. You should totally. I mean, I would say they're both where to. Yeah. I mean, either way, you should. Well, oh, no. I, I, I mean, this, yeah, yeah, I look more to it, but I mean, like at this point, I see. I've been to so many different construction totally. sites around it, and it's just you know. Yeah, and he's in the he's in the same boat. Like totally. they're literally trucking it in. Which so now. I wonder if that has something to do with A and R. Gravel. Well, yeah, so after I read, they were allowed to pull out the old gravel, dry it, and use Either, it. Like off the and last year they weren't allowed to. Now they're not. I'm sure so. that will be revisited by the administration. But you know, it, it's just crazy that we're just. It's just another resource that we're wasting for. But also, I think, like, I would say email them if you're willing, just because the like joke is like, if one person emails, it means 50 other people are thinking it, and you were just the one who took the time to email. I'm, I'm not saying it will get you anywhere. I'm just saying, since you feel strongly enough to tell us who have no jurisdiction over right, state exactly. properties, or that, I would. Or that I gave up my evening tonight to come that's here. That's what I'm saying. And I think you can say it. And I mean, like, it's. I mean, we're local elected officials. So there's something to be said for, like, what I'm hearing from the room from local elected officials is that if enough state reps are saying I'm getting emails about X, Y, Z, like the people who happen. had to do it in their house, like when, when the pharmacy flooded, it was my perspective was on the way to the pharmacy, knowing it was underwater, was I saw someone pick up a, a photograph, shake it out, and hang it on a clothesline in the porch, and I was like, that's it. And my ex, like, we got to the pharmacy, I looked at him, I said, we should go home and have breakfast, and then he goes, that's all you're going to say. I go, we should have a big breakfast, because we don't know when we're going to eat again. He's like, so you can say, we lost stuff. I didn't lose my grandmother's wedding dress, we just lost stuff. I'm like, people lost and then these same people now lost their stuff three, four times. Like, it's, it's nuts. I can't even imagine mentally how they're doing it. It's great. Thank you guys for being Absolutely. Thank you. A lot of people are excited to get on with the rest of the show. I think we can just get around this time. We're just eating the water. Thank you. I can't. I can't. We don't have to kick them out. Socialization. Um, if anyone wants to stay, you're welcome. And if anyone has other ideas they didn't say tonight, I just wanted to plug that they can go to our municipal manager and ask. Right, right. Yeah, we make use of it. Thank you. It's just a quick one. Thanks. Thank you for coming. Good. Roger, I'm giving it to you if you want it. All right, I will call the select board meeting back to order. Thank you to Alyssa, Nora, Liz, and uh, all our other facilitators and people that helped out with the mitigation prioritization. Down to the park. Uh, we'll be looking forward to a follow up on. The, the dots, and then as Alyssa just said, anyone with further ideas, uh, they should go where, Alyssa? 
Um, I would say email the municipal manager, T Lights, and you can CC Roger and I or the whole select board if you want. It's up to you. But. All right. So we'll take your email suggestions uh, on what you liked, what, you, what else you'd like to see, and uh, we'll take all of that into consideration. Next item on the agenda is to determine the meeting agenda for August 5th. And we have next a, week, right? Yes, that's next week. <laughs> we, we, we do things uh, just all the time now. Just start um, every week. So this will be next Monday. Uh, we have a draft agenda in front of us um, that includes uh, discussing leaf peeper traffic. I believe we'll have uh, Dan uh, Schneider um, from Cold Hollow and a uh, representative from RW. And then uh, the Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee Handbook discussion. Are we going to have members from the... Uh, I can, I, yes, I will get at least one of them here. Are, are they done? No, no, he uh, is rewriting the, <laughs> rewriting the handbook right now. It's okay. being revised based on recent... Yes, okay, yeah. yeah, so it's in, it's in, it's in revision, but, but the, the secretary of the committee is hard at work on it. Okay, good. Okay, and then we've got one of the longest items ever. <laughs> do you want to sub this in, Roger? Like, do we want check, do we want dot vote summary as yes, a, a replacement would. agenda item there or elsewhere? Yeah. Uh, um, we could say hazard mitigation update you, or something. You went before the... Um, yeah, why don't we do the, the update before the uh, Natural Disaster Preparedness Committee handbook discussion. Okay, so we'll just insert that at 8 o'clock, and then that'll probably take five minutes. you think there'd be any Idea. more? Yeah, update. I would go 10, just in case 10, we have okay. comments. And then 8, 8, 10 has the um, hazard task force. We'll just bump everything else definitive down. We'll give you uh, the report. report. I'm sorry, Roger, did you put that before the natural disaster? The report will come out first at 8 o'clock. That goes to 8, 10, and then at 8, 10 to... Let's say 8.30, 20 minutes, Kane. Do you think you need more than that? No, I don't think we'll need more than that. I Leaf peeper traffic at 45 minutes, we're going to have quite the discussion. Oh, yeah, leaf peeper traffic could be shortened up. Yeah, I think. These are drafts. OK, yeah. no, right. I just, All right, well, I'll, I'll just We'll, we'll uh, as I could go on. I could go on for 45 minutes about <laughs> leaf peeper traffic. Yeah, thank you. Um, so we'll, we'll adjust the times on Friday. OK. This is just to get uh, all the items uh, sure. on the, uh, on the uh, docket. Uh, so then we have this uh, lower patio uh, permit. So Roger, just to, if I may for a second, the reason we, you and I chose to put this on the body of the agenda is because uh, Aaron has included requesting permission to use the alley three times. Right. And um, his language on his permit request times per year. Might be. Um, so Mark and I had spoke briefly about it and decided there should be a discussion about what the board wants to allow him to do. Yeah, and I think it's it's also sort of a policy issue here. Is are we going to allow permit requests sort of that? are multiple. Uh, this came up earlier with the uh, good fire mm -hmm. uh, uh, application. Uh, they wanted to do, I don't know, something like Well, the, the, the trigger in the zoning is seven, more than seven events. You have to go to DRB, I think. So right. that's what happened. Right. And uh, I don't know, from, from my perspective, there are a couple of issues here. One is the alley, uh, the, the ownership of the alley is uh, not entirely clear. Uh, so asking for use of the alley, um, is is um, it triggers other other discussions, uh, and then again the, the the point being, are we going to allow for an, an indeterminate number of uh, of entertainment uh, events, uh, or are we going to require a specific number with specific dates? Uh, so all those I think are issues that that we need to discuss and decide, right? Mm. So all of that will be discussed then. Um, and then FEMA buyouts. Uh, we may have more buyouts to discuss. Uh, community bike share. 
This was a, an item that came up uh, previously uh, from uh, the Central Vermont Planning. Uh, we were asked whether we wanted to contribute towards uh, $3,000 towards the study. And I did get more information from them today okay. that I can forward along. I haven't read it myself yet, so I don't know what's in there. All right. I'll well, we'll keep it on the agenda. Um, police stats and evaluation of statistics. Will we have a... Uh, will the lieutenant be there? I'm going to make the request. Okay, good. If he can't make it, do you, would you like to delay that? I think we would have them in person. I think that's a lot better than just having a bunch of numbers. Yeah. Okay. Because they, then he could respond to quote queries. Mm -hmm. Okay. Or a road and pedestrian safety plan. Police department. Uh, and adopt changes to the traffic ordinance. That comes from Woody. Okay. Uh, there was something changed recently. Stop signs, <coughs> signs, something like that. He needs it. I have an email about it. Yeah, stop sign, I believe. And lapsing at what it is, but he needs you to do that. Is that, get you the is that including like Jake breaks and that kind of stuff? No, no, no. no that was noise. Oh, I know that's noise, oh, but I'm sorry. that goes it's into the handicap parking spot. That's it's right. The handicap right. parking spot. Handicap parking space. Okay. 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 We may, right. you know, at some point when when the dust settles on some other things, we may want to just do a, a broader look at that to make sure it's consistent with what mm -hmm. we're seeing and right in the roads. It's easy to put a stop sign in, change the speed limit sometimes, and just forget the update the ordinance from time to time. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah so that shouldn't take long. And um, Forrest, uh, remind me of Forrest's last name? McDonald. McDonald, um, uh, who lives up on uh, Maple Street, um, emailed me uh, asking about the status of that uh, radar uh, speed sign. I guess it was up for three weeks and then got taken down, and, uh, and he also <coughs> wants to know, again, about uh, the feasibility of a uh, bump uh, on Maple Street, which I'm sure our director He's of public not, safety. Uh, he is not the only resident of Maple Street who is vocal in their support of a speed bump. Okay. I get more complaints about speeding on Maple Street than the rest of the town combined. Really? Wow. Ah. Okay. It, I don't recall if it's... Well, it's very straight. Mm -hmm. And you can go really fast. You really can. And it's not, it's not one person. It's consistent. Did your son drive there? Uh, my son has <laughs> toned himself down there. <laughs> I'm driving on the interstate now. But it definitely, it's, it, it definitely warrants a discussion about further traffic enforcement on Maple Street, specifically. Right. <laughs> Are we adding that? Uh, well, it's a uh, road and pedestrian safety plan. Could that be? So my understanding was this was the holdover Katie Gallagher request around, like, is there a comprehensive plan for making roads and pedestrians safe in Waterbury more generally? So I'm not opposed to having it as part of that, I guess. I was going to propose moving that because I don't know that we have an update on that particular item. No, we sort of have a flood in between. Yeah. Well, I let's, let's hold on to it and include a discussion of... Uh, uh, speeding on uh, Maple, Street. Maple Street. And then if we need to address the, the further um, point we can uh, go forward. Anything else that anyone would like to add to the agenda? So our next meeting is Monday, August 19th. Are we approving, are we having a special meeting to approve our pre-application or is there that much leeway? Because if it's so due the 16th. I just learned this meeting that the pre-application deadline was extended to, Move the, 30th. to the 30th. Moved to the 30th, I thought right. so. Okay. Uh, so yeah. we can have they final concepts on the 19th. Nice. Okay, so we need to take that up on the 19th. Okay, so then why, so should we do hazard mitigation idea and grant timeline update for the agenda, just so that, anyway. Are you talking about for uh, the 5th? Yeah, I was just saying we can do hazard mitigation. Well, I, or it could just be update, grant and idea update, just so that we can, since I said here tonight we need things by the 16th to the audience uh -huh. that was previously heard. Right. So what, can we add that to uh, your previous item? Yeah, that's what I was saying. <laughs> Everything clear as mud back here? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so that, Alyssa was just adding to the previous item that we inserted before the natural disaster preparedness committee. Summary handled. flood mitigation. Mm -hmm. Okay, and adding plus flood mitigation grant update. Thank you. Okay. I think Roger's good at cutting through my mud. Is that a flood mitigation strategy? <coughs> no. If only it would work on a broader basis. And, and um, Roger, it doesn't have to be this next meeting or even the meeting on the 19th, but I would like to stress pushing ahead on getting the housing trust at least on the books. It, you know, we don't have to spend the money. I just want it on the books so that we have it, so that it is part of our government. Okay. Um, it could be the first meeting of September, but not necessarily. Um, we are. I don't know where we're going to end up with the. Things. I'll, I'll put it. I'll pencil it in here. <laughs> and if it looks like we can put it in for the fifth, we can. Okay. okay, that sounds great. Thank you. Anything else? That's pretty full. It does look full, but I think some things like that big one in the middle will just shrink down. <laughs> right. Um, so uh, if there is nothing else, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. I move to adjourn. Second. Moving second. All in favor say aye. 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 aye.